All right, so we are here at the amazingly gorgeous uh, Cedar Breaks National Monument. If you haven't been here, please come. It's amazing, it'll blow your minds. Uh, the reason that we're here is I want to introduce the topic of plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is often referred to as the unifying theory in geology. And this means that uh, basically all the other geologic theories, geologic processes, are better understood and make even more sense because of our knowledge of the way that the Earth's plates move and interact with each other. Uh, the theory of plate tectonics is, of course, the theory that the outermost layer of Earth, or the lithosphere, is divided up into these distinct uh, pieces or chunks known as tectonic plates. And these plates move and interact with each other in different ways. And the ways that they interact determine how landscapes and landforms uh, basically form. Uh, for example, here at Cedar Breaks, we have this beautiful orange-pink uh, formation called the Claron Formation. Well, this formation was deposited in a shallow lake that wasn't that far above sea level. And now, today, right now, it's at over 10 or 11,000 feet above sea level. This is due to tectonic stresses acting upon it and uplifting it. The actual deposition of this Claron formation was controlled by the motion of tectonic plates that determined wh which places were uplifted and eroding and which places were down dropped to form basins where this sediment could collect. The modern processes of erosion that form this beautiful amphitheater behind me is also controlled by tectonic motion. Uh, without the current modern uplift of this plateau rim that we're standing on, you wouldn't have rapid erosion creating these prominent fins and hoodoos and pillars that you see behind me. So hopefully through that you can see that all of the beautiful scenery that we have on Earth, all of the geologic processes, we can trace all of these back to the way that the plates move and interact with each other. Earth is divided up into several distinct and separate layers. These layers can be defined in a couple of different ways. First off, you can define how the composition changes with depth. And these are the layers that you're probably most familiar with, the crust, mantle, and core. Another way of describing these layers is through their physical properties. For example, the outermost layer of Earth, the lithosphere, it's rigid and brittle. It breaks. It doesn't bend so easily. The layer below that is called the asthenosphere, which is not quite solid, not quite liquid. It's somewhere in between. It has a plastic state. Then below the asthenosphere is the mesosphere, which is solid. And below that is the outer core, which is liquid. And the inner core, which is once again solid. Because the outermost layer, the lithosphere, is rigid and brittle, it has the ability to move around or shift above the plastic asthenosphere. Because the lithosphere is also brittle, it is broken or divided up into 14 distinct and separate pieces, much like the pieces of a puzzle. Each piece moves together as one single body. It moves in the same direction. Where two plates meet, a boundary is formed. This boundary is represented as a line on a map. There are three basic types of plate boundaries, convergent, divergent, and transform. Convergent boundaries are where the two plates are moving towards each other. They're converging or colliding. Divergent boundaries are where the two plates are moving away from each other. They're rifting. They're diverging. They're moving away from each other. And transform boundaries are where the two plates don't necessarily move towards or away from each other, but instead slide past each other laterally, as represented here. Okay, so now let's look at some very specific examples of plate boundaries found on planet Earth. We'll look at convergent, divergent, and then transform. So first off, convergent boundaries. There are many of them. Uh, but a very prominent and famous convergent boundary is found just north of India, where you have this really prominent mountain range that is called the Himalayas. This is where Mount Everest is. These mountains are obviously the tallest mountains on Earth, the tallest mountain range. Mount Everest is just over 29,000 feet above sea level. And 
these mountains are the result of two different continental plates, in this case the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate, converging or colliding. As these two plates converge, the lithosphere buckles and thickens, and it forms this really tall, prominent mountain range. Okay, now let's look at another type of convergent boundary in the Pacific Ocean, where you have the Philippine plate and the giant Pacific plate, which are converging. In this case, these are both oceanic plates. The Pacific plate, as it converges, it is forced downward or beneath the Philippine plate. And that results in this really deep line of ocean, which is called an ocean trench. In this case, this is actually Marianas Trench, which is the deepest trench in the world. It is, in fact, deeper than Mount Everest is tall. It is further below sea level than Mount Everest is above sea level. As the Pacific Plate is forced beneath the Philippine Plate, it also melts, and that melt rises and creates a bunch of volcanoes. So you'll see with, with any type of subduction, volcanoes form. In this case, you have a variety of volcanic islands that have formed. And these islands, or this chain of islands, is going to be parallel to where the ocean trench is. OK, now let's find a divergent boundary. Let's fly over the Atlantic Ocean. South America and Africa, they used to be connected in a supercontinent called Pangaea but they have diverged or separated. And as they separated, the Atlantic Ocean opened up. We can see the boundary that separates these two plates in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, which is actually a feature called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Along this boundary, new crust is being formed. And it's being formed through basically a chain of fissure volcanoes where lava breaks through the surface, and it cools to form this prominent ocean ridge. It's basically an underwater mountain range. Okay? One common misconception is that when two oceanic plates move apart, it creates a trench. That's not true. When two oceanic plates move apart, it creates an elevated region or a ridge. Another example of a divergent boundary is found in northeastern Africa in the Red Sea. The Arabian Peninsula and Africa used to be connected together, but they have diverged or rifted apart, creating a prominent valley. This valley eventually grew large enough to become flooded with seawater and has formed the Red Sea. Okay, now let's find some transform boundaries. If we go just to the west of South America, here we have a divergent plate boundary, an ocean ridge, where the Nazca plate is moving away from the Pacific plate. Along this ocean ridge, you'll notice that there are really prominent steps or kinks in it. That's because it's not a pure divergent boundary. This boundary also has sections of transform motion where the ridge, here's one section of ridge, here's another section of ridge, it's being laterally offset and that is due to transform motion. Another excellent example of a transform plate boundary is found in California. There we have the famous San Andreas Fault, which is actually part of a transform plate boundary. That's why there are so many earthquakes in California, is due to this plate boundary and this fault that's formed from the plate boundary. So if we zoom in on this, on this fault or this plate boundary, what we see is there are these really prominent dry riverbeds or drainages. But once again, notice how these drainages, they don't flow in a straight direction. They actually have this kink or offset on them. That's because these rivers are meeting this plate boundary and then they are shifted along this plate boundary to form this really prominent kink. And you can see that all along this linear feature, which is the San Andreas Fault. Okay, so hopefully that gives you 
an idea of how these plate boundaries contribute to the patterns and features that are found all over planet Earth. Um, hopefully you never look at maps or images from space the same. You can see there are many uh, chains of islands or volcanoes. There are many trenches. There are many ocean ridges. And all of these features are the direct result of plate boundaries.